So as I mentioned, this is our 10th Christmas as a congregation. How many of you have been here for all 10 Christmases? All right. Oh, a lot of you. Very, very good. So I can't remember if our first Christmas was a, um, a Friday night or a Saturday, but it was very, very close to the weekend. And um, as you can see, when you have Christmas Eve and then you have a weekend, it's not your highest attended weekend of the year. So we were trying to think, what can we do that would make it special? And I've got a buddy who's uh, church this weekend. They went down to one service on the weekend. I thought, and he said, because nobody's going to come. And I said, well, you're giving them an excuse not to come, right? So I said, we're going to keep all of our services and, and every year we have. But we wanted to do something kind of nice right after Christmas. And so one of the things that has become a tradition was the first year I read a story that I actually came across when I was in junior high. And I got done reading it, and uh, people came up and said, let's make that a tradition. And so it's become a tradition. And the name of the story is called The Three Trees, Tale of the Three Trees. And Diane's got the pictures up on the screen for you as I read this story. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. The first little tree looked up at the stars twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Years passed. The rains came, the sun shone, and the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is beautiful. It's perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It's perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship fit for kings. The third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. She stood tall and straight and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter's shop, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were being built that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. Too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river, he was taken to a little lake, and every day he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in a lumberyard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a, candle or a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. Soon a thundering and thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. One Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. 
She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we know that in that manger, a shadow appears, and it's the shadow of the cross. The moment that set the tone for Christmas, the reason why Christmas even happened. And so we're grateful, Heavenly Father, that Jesus entered into this world to become like us, to experience life from our perspective. But that ultimately he went to that cross for us and rose again so that we would always know that you are for us, that nothing can ever separate us from your love, that all is forgiven, and now we can hear those two powerful words, follow me as Jesus calls to us. Thank you for this Christmas season. And as we enter now into 2015, May the babe in Bethlehem, the crucified and risen Savior, call us and may we follow him on that bold, reckless adventure of bringing grace to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.